Good evening. I'd like to call the 26th meeting of the 2015 2016 Common Council to order. Would the clerk please read the quote for today? Thank you, Mayor. Any job very well done that has been carried out by people who are fully dedicated is always a source of inspiration. Thank you very much. Please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Would the clerk please call the roll for the meeting? There are 16 present. Thank you. Next, we'll move on to approval of the minutes from our last council meeting, Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to approve. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the minutes? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Uh, next item is resignations. City Attorney. We have one resignation from Alderperson Don Hammond from the Sheboygan Common Council, effective the end of the day today. Who's in the night? <laughs> Alderman I'll Hammond. That. Third, fourth. Um, uh, move to accept and file. <laughs> move to file? I think uh, I have the floor. Second. So, and we have, have a motion and a second. Wanted to give you one more chance. Uh, Appreciate um, it. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion aye. passes. <laughs> Is there any public forum for this evening? Not this evening. Thank you. Next, move on to mayor's announcements. Tonight on the last uh, meeting of our council for this year, we have to say goodbye to some very good friends and some people who were great colleagues. The first one is Alderman Julie Koth. Uh, Julie served from 2009 to 13, and then she took some time off and came back from uh, 2014 to 2016. During that time, Julie served on the standing committees of salary and grievances. Uh, during the time on salary and grievance, she served as vice chairman. On finance committee, she also served as vice chairman. She was on the public works committee and the law and licensing committees. She also did service on several other committees, the Board of Housing Appeals, the Building Use Committee, the Group Health Insurance Committee, the Group Health and Wellness Committee, the Mayor's Neighborhood Leadership Cabinet, the Senior Activity Center Commission, the Special Committee on Risk Management, and the Sustainable Sheboygan Task Force. And she's made a request to me to try to find another committee for her to serve on as a, a citizen, so I'm working on that for her. Julie, would you please come up and accept the Certificate of Appreciation? <laughs> The certificate reads, the City of Sheboygan is honored to present Alderman Julie Koth the Certificate of Appreciation and Recognition for her six years of dedicated service to the City of Sheboygan, signed by Jim Amodio and Mayor Mike Vandersteen. Julie, congratulations. Would you like to say anything? Yes. Please do. Again. <laughs> um, though this is not my first farewell speech, it's going to be my last. <laughs> Um, I'd like to thank my constituents for allowing me to be here. Um, I'd like to thank uh, the Common Council, uh, city staff, elected officials. It's been a, a pleasure and an honor uh, working with each and every one of you. Um, I'd like to thank uh, Alderman Scott Lewandowski and uh, Alderman uh, Jody Vanderweel Bonnet uh, for giving our district or giving our constituents a choice. So thank you for that. Um, and to Don, Chief, living the dream, whereas. <laughs> um, thank you so much uh, for all your help for keeping us out of hot water. Um, 
and good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Alderman Don Hammond. You know, Don was pressed into service while his, in his first term to serve on the Finance Committee. And th three months into that service, uh, there were some issues that needed to be resolved and people left positions. And Don was asked to serve as chairman of the Finance Committee. And he's done that very admirably since. And he's also then elected the following term president of the council. But the positions that Don's held as president of the council, 2013 to 2016, finance committee, finance committee chairman, public works committee, salary and grievances committee. Other committees that he's held during this time is Board of Housing Appeals and Fair Housing Practices, Capital Improvements Commission, City County Shared Services Committee, Collective Bargaining Committee, the Redevelopment Authority, Sheboygan Transit Commission, Special Committee on Risk Management, and Strategic Fiscal Planning Committee. And I think you all know that Don puts a whole lot of extra time in whenever something was needed here at City Hall, he would be here to participate and, and, and play a role. Don, you've done an exemplary job, and I'm very proud to present you with this certificate. If you'd please come up. The City of Sheboygan is honored to present Alderman Don Hammond the Certificate of Appreciation and Recognition for your five years of dedicated service from April 20th of 2010 through April 18th of 2016. Don, thank you so thank much. You. Appreciate it. Thank you. Obviously, I was really bored the last seven years, so <laughs> jumped on every committee I could possibly think of. So I won't talk too long. Um, I think I said a lot last time, but I just do... Uh, echo Julie's comments, uh, thank everybody um, for their help and friendship. Also, our constituents in, in my district that was the 5th or 7th, now it's 7th or 5th, I changed with redistricting, but I do appreciate all their support and help and the kind emails that I've gotten over the last couple, uh, last week or so. Um, again, I just encourage you guys to stay focused on the economic development, stay focused on keeping debt down, stay focused on the finances, and the city will continue to be in great shape, so thank you. Next is a proclamation uh, for Arbor Day. Uh, proclamation by the city of Sheboygan, whereas in 1872, Sterling Morton proposed to the Nebraska Board of Agriculture that a special day be set aside for the planting of trees. And, this and whereas this holiday called Arbor Day was first observed with the planting of more than a million trees in Nebraska, and whereas Arbor Day is now observed throughout the nation and the world, and whereas trees can reduce the erosion of our precious topsoils by wind and water, cut heating and cooling costs, moderate the temperature, clean the air, provide life-giving oxygen, and provide habitat for wildlife, and whereas trees are a renewable resource, giving us paper, wood for our homes, fuel for our fires, and countless other wood products, and whereas trees in our city increase property values, enhance the economic vitality of business areas, and beautify our community, and whereas trees, wherever they're planted, are a source of joy and spiritual renewal, I, Mike Vandersteen, Mayor of the City of Sheboygan, do hereby proclaim April 22nd is Arbor Day in the City of Sheboygan and urge citizens to celebrate Arbor Day to support uh, special efforts to protect our trees and woodlands. I'd like to present this to Joe Curlin, the Director of Parks and Forestry for the City of Sheboygan. And to go along with that, um, we've got a, a special meeting on the Emerald Ash Borer. It's a public information meeting. And um, one of the strategies that the city and our, our citizens may want to use for the trees that are on their own property um, is to treat those trees to eliminate the Emerald Ash Borer that's, that's found in many of the ash trees. 
Uh, the best time to treat the, uh, this, apply this treatment is in the late spring, early summer. So we're having a meeting on April 20th at 7 p.m. at the Qantas Fieldhouse, and people can get more information so they can make good decisions. There's also a neighborhood bus tour uh, in association with our neighborhood programs. That's going to be April 26th. That's Tuesday at 5 p.m. People should meet at the Sheboygan County Museum. And this will be uh, touring the neighborhoods of Flats, Kings Park, River Watch, uh, South Pier, Sheridan, and River Bend. And they, if they are interested, they should RSVP to 459-0251. There's a limited of uh, 30 people uh, that are, can, can participate. And I just want to let everybody know that because we have a new thing happening with the uh, council meeting tomorrow, we have, we're going to be electing a new alderman to fill Don's position. So your appointments will not be available until after that election. I sat down with both of the candidates and asked them to fill out the same surveys that you did. And the, the, sur the appointments are going to be different based on, on which candidate wins the election. So those will be available for you right after uh, the meeting tomorrow uh, as we go forward. Next, we'll move on to a public hearing. Item 2.1 is a hearing to amend the city's zoning map to change the use district classification of property located at 630 River Front Drive from Class CC Central Commercial to Class CC with a planned unit development overlay classification. Is there anyone wishing to be heard? Would you please step up to the podium? I have your name, please. Leslie Kohler. Go ahead. I'm Leslie Kohler. I'm with C's, Chairman of C's, and I'm just looking for the support for this change in the zoning so that we can uh, build our new boating building down on East Street. Thank you very much, Leslie. Is there anyone else wishing to be heard? Is there anyone else wishing to be heard? Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to close. Second. Thank you for that motion. All those in favor of closing the hearings, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Next, we'll move on to the consent agenda. Uh, this will include items 3.1 through 3.14. Alderman Hammond. Thank you again, Mr. Mayor. I move to accept and file all reports of officers, accept and adopt all reports of committees, and put all resolutions and ordinances upon their passage. Second. Thank you for your motion and support. Is there any discussion on any of the items in the consent agenda? Seeing none, the clerk please call the roll for passage. Motion passes. Item 4.1 is an RO by the Redevelopment Authority to whom was directly referred resolution number 191 of 1516 by Alderman Hammond approving the terms and conditions of the ground lease agreement between the Redevelopment Authority and the South Pier uh, Sheboygan LLC and recommends approval of the resolution. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to accept and file and put the resolution upon its passage. Second. Thank you for that motion and support under discussion. Alderman Lassard. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm curious how um, we came to, with the terms and conditions to address the um, Section 8 WIDA um, issue that we respond? had had before. Can I answer yeah. that for you? So uh, to simply say that we cannot allow it to become low-income housing Section 8 or any of the other programs uh, is not legal. Okay. We can't do that. Uh, so um, I'm not sure if it shows in, in, the, uh, it, in the ground lease yet at this point, um, but we are working on language that will be added that basically says to the extent allowed by law, 
it's going to remain market housing. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Any other discussion? Hearing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? Fourteen eyes, one no. Motion passes. Item 4.2 is RO by the Redevelopment Authority, to whom was directly referred Resolution 192 of 1516 by Alderman Hammond, approving the terms and conditions of the development agreement between the City of Sheboygan, the Redevelopment Authority, and the South Pier Sheboygan LLC, and recommends that the resolution be passed. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to accept and to file and put the resolution upon its passage. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Again, under discussion, Alderman Hammond. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I guess I, I want to say that um, I appreciate the efforts of this project. I think it's going to be very transformational for the South Pier, exactly what the South Pier um, plan calls for. Um, so I look forward to seeing this on the skyline over the next uh, couple of years. So thank you. Thank you for those comments. Any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? <clears throat> oh, I'm sorry, Alderman okay. Donahue? I'm just an eye. My machine's restarting. All right. Aye. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> Joe, not you too, right? No. <laughs> I couldn't stop this from happening. Fourteen eyes, one no. Motion passes. Items 4.3 and 4. Point, uh, through 4.7 will be referred to various committees of the new council. Under resolutions, items 5.1 and 5.2 will also be referred to committees of the new council. Under reports of committees, item 6.1 is an RC by law and licensing to whom is referred RO number 296 of 1516 by the city clerk submitting various licensed applications and recommends that taxicab driver's license application 0565 be denied based on his, excuse me, upon his failure to accurately reveal all relevant convictions on his applications, his record of violations to the licensed activity, and his record as a repeat law offender, and his failure to cooperate with the committee. Alderman Lassard. Thank you. I request that I move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Second. Thank you for that motion and support under discussion. Is Tanya Housey available as she should come today? We denied her license. She was called in twice and never came before us, so it was a unanimous decision to deny her license. Thank you. Any other discussion on the motion? All the person on the start, I believe this person is Nathan Krieger, 0565. Is Nathan Krieger here? Okay, thank you for that clarification. Okay, then, um, would the clerk please call the roll on 6.1? 15 eyes. Motion passes. Item 6.2 is an RC by law and licensing to who is referred RO number 296 of 1516 by the city clerk submitting license application and recommends that beverage operators license application 1009 be denied based on her failure to accurately reveal all relevant convictions on her applications, her record of violations related to the license activity and her record as a repeat law offender. Alderman Lassard. Thank you. I ask that the RC report of committee be accepted and adopted. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Under discussion, Alderman Lassard. Is, I hope I have this one right, Tanya Housie. No, this is Jaja Vest. Vost. Oh my goodness, fine stuff's not lining up. What was the name again, city attorney? Jaja Vost. Is she in the audience? Jaja, do you want to come up to the podium?
Would you like to address the council on the issue? Uh, yes. Um, I reviewed this and I uh, was here last week. Uh, first of all, I want to say failure to, you know, revealing all my relevant convictions. I didn't fail to do that. I did put down the misdemeanor in the OWI. And uh, the, the woman before me, Marquita Norton, you know, the condition upon the application was being corrected. Okay, so, you know, the records violations related and uh, to the license activity. I'm gonna state this because it says here, a city may not refuse to license qualified applicant because of a conviction record for an offense unless substantially related to the circumstances of a particular job. Um, you know, also you put here the record, or second is a repeat law violator. <laughs> Nothing has to do with the license of working at a gas station as a clerk. That's all I want to do is I'm a clerk, I'd be a clerk. Um, I just want a job. <laughs> the, um, I mean, that's all I can say. I, everything you, you guys have on my CCAB, I mean, this goes back to 2000. I don't know what you're trying to pull up here. There's two disorderly conducts and them work from at home. Okay, well, thank you very much for those comments. So, yeah. Alderman Lassard. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, we had a lengthy discussion in our in our meeting, and upon um, we asked the police department what they had recommended. They didn't have a recommendation, but they did have a discussion. And the problem that um, they have had is they have had a um, extreme amount of contact with this particular party, um, and she has been intoxicated each of those times. And we were looking that hopefully within four to six months. She could have a better record of not having contact with the police party regarding sobriety. Um, issuing a operator's license for the, her to work at Clark Gasoline Station is one issue, but once you're operating, getting an operator's license, it's good for if you wanted a 10 bar or anywhere within the city. So the vote was four to deny and one to approve, and I wonder if our city attorney could go over the charges. The uh, items, uh, she did include a 2012 uh, misdemeanor conviction for uh, operating a motor vehicle while intoxicated. Uh, she did not uh, reveal uh, an ordinance conviction from 2007 for misuse of 911, an ordinance conviction from 2008 for disorderly conduct, an ordinance conviction from 2009 for disorderly conduct, a misdemeanor conviction from 2010 for disorderly conduct, uh, an ordinance conviction from 2012 from, for unlicensed animal, a 2013 misdemeanor conviction for uh, disorderly conduct. Uh, the committee made the determination uh, that uh, uh, Ms. Vost um, not only failed to reveal all of her uh, convictions on her uh, application, uh, but that the violations, uh, uh, for the most part, uh, all but the unlicensed animal were uh, related to the license activity. The committee's uh, decision on that was based on what Alderperson Lassard indicated uh, with regard to the police department's concern that uh, in each of these uh, incidents, as well as other contacts the police have had, uh, Ms. Vost was always highly uh, intoxicated. Thank you for those comments. So Alderman Bourne. My question was answered, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, is there any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion, please signify by, I'm sorry, we have to do a roll call. Thirteen eyes, two noes. Motion passes. 
You're excused, Don. Thank you. Item 6.3 is an RC by law and licensing to whom was referred pursuant to RO number 323 of 1516 by the city clerk license applications for the period ending 123116 through 63017 recommends uh, granting the licenses. Alderman Lassard. I ask, I, I move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, please call the roll for passage. Fourteen ayes and one abstention. Motion passes. Item 6.4 is an RC by finance to whom was referred resolution number 187 of 1516 by Alderman Hammond authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2016 budget to establish appropriation for purchase of adjacent lot to Wildwood Athletic Field and recommends that the resolution be passed. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Move to accept and adopt and put the resolution upon its passage. Second. Thank you for your motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? Fifteen ayes. Motion passes. 6.5 is an RC by finance to whom is referred resolution number 186 of 1516 by Alderman Hammond authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2016 budget to establish revenue and appropriation for donation from Webster Bank for police department bike rodeo and revenue and appropriation for advance <laughs> to TID uh, 16. Uh, land improvements and recommends that the resolution be passed. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Move to accept and adopt and put the resolution upon its passage. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Under discussion. Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Alderman Hammond, is that uh, $500,000 for those improvements? Or is that the additional money that has to be spent on the uh, Boston Star property? Yes. Thank you. Any other discussion? See, now will the clerk please call the roll for passage. <clears throat> 15 eyes. Motion passes. Item 6.6 .6 is an RC by finance to whom was referred resolution number 193 of 1516 by Alderman Hammond approving the first amendment to the contract for sale of land for private development and by and between the city of Sheboygan and A Street Housing Corporation and recommends that the resolution be passed. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to accept and adopt and put the resolution upon its passage. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Don? Oh, it didn't take. Sorry. Not gone yet. <laughs> <laughs> Fifteen eyes. Motion passes. Item 6.8 is an RC by finance. Doomers referred resolution number 191 of 1516. Direct referral by Alderman Hammond approving the terms and conditions of the ground lease agreement between the Redevelopment Authority and South Pier Sheboygan LLC. <coughs> and recommends that the documents be accepted and placed on file. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to accept and adopt and put the resolution upon its passage. Second. Thank you for your motion and support. Any discussion on that motion? Which one are we on? 6.7? 6.7. Yeah. I'm on 6.7. We're on 6.7. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I skipped over 6.7. Let's back up there. Um, if that's okay with the motioners. 6.8. We'll come back to it. Okay. We'll just continue with 6.8. Um, Alderman Jose. Mr. Mayor, I think you, you read the resolution correctly. You just had the number at the beginning wrong. Right. Just the wrong number. 
Okay. So we're voting on 6.7. Thank you for that clarification. <laughs> Any other discussion on 6.7? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Fourteen eyes, one no. Motion passes. Item six point eight is an RC by finance. Humers referred resolution number one ninety one of fifteen sixteen, direct referral by Alderman Hammond, approving the terms and conditions of the ground lease agreement between the Redevelopment Authority and South Pier Sheboygan LLC, and recommends that the documents be accepted and placed on file. Alderman Hammond. Thank you again, Mr. Mayor. I really didn't want to work this hard my last day, but <laughs> I move to accept and adopt and put the resolution upon its passage. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Any discussion on that motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Just a clarification. It's not to pass the resolution. It's just to file the documents, correct? 6.8. Oh, my apologies, yes. Just to file. Adopt, file the documents, yeah. Second to that. Nice. And that motion to file is passed. Item 6.9 is an RC by Public Protection and Safety. To whom is referred General Ordinance 58 of 1516 by Alderman Field, <laughs> amending subsection 26-1008A of the Municipal Code relating to certification of compliance with Clearwater requirements and wishes to send the document to the Council with no recommendation. Alderman Thiel. Thank you, Mayor. I move the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Under discussion, Alderman Thiel. I was unable to uh, attend the public protection and safety meeting this week, so um, I'd ask uh, Alderman Bellinger to fill everybody in on what happened. Thank you, Alderman Bellinger. Thank, thank you, Mayor. Um, I would like to uh, defer to the the city attorney, but uh, what happened at the meeting was um, apparently there's a, a state statute that you can no longer. Um, attach the, the clear water requirement to the sale of homes. And so as a workaround, what they did was had any interior uh, building permit that would be pulled that, that would be would trigger the clear water inspection. And uh, at, at the meeting, there was some lengthy discussion and it was a two to two vote. So it came out of committee with no recommendation. But I guess I would let, defer to you and, and give clarification, um, you know, if we know why we can't, we can't tie it to the sale of, of the property. And, um, and it's my understanding that it's, it's the certificate of clear water compliance is good for two years. So if you were to say remodel your basement and that would trigger an event and you would have the clear water um, certificate and you would be good for two years, then a couple of years later, or you know more than two years later, you remodel your basement you pull another permit, then you have to get another one. I'm assuming that's correct. And so I guess it's, there, there was some, some issue with the, with the frequency or how long the duration of a clear water would, would be good for and you know, how, you know, how often that homeowners would be under this burden to, to get this done. So if you could just clarify some of that for us. Sure. Thank you, Alderman Boren, City Attorney. Um, this uh, ordinance actually Pleasure. doesn't uh, deal with the time frame. Uh, what happened is... Uh, approximately a year ago, uh, this council approved uh, a change to move from doing uh, clear water certification at the time of sale to the time of pulling a building permit. Uh, they did that because the uh, legislature passed a law that prevented us from enforcing at the time of sale. Uh, so uh, this body did approve a change, uh, kept all the the rules intact other than the time frame uh, of when a, a permit would be or when a clear water certification would be required. During that, uh, during the work in, uh, you know, under the new ordinance, uh, the building inspection department found one issue that they felt uh, was detrimental uh, to uh, citizens 
who were getting the Clearwater certification. And that was, they were coming in for a permit because they expected to be able to get the permit pretty much right then and there, uh, and then finding out, no, you have to get a, a Clearwater certificate first. And if the Clearwater inspector, because he's busy that day or happens to be on vacation, uh, would, they would not be able to issue the permit to that person uh, at that time until the inspector had had the opportunity uh, to go in and take a look at it. So what this ordinance does is basically provides a 10-day uh, period of grace. So what, what happens now under this ordinance, if, if it's approved, uh, someone comes in, applies for uh, a building permit, finds out that they need to get a clear water certificate, uh, they would get the permit that same day so long as they set up an appointment for the Clearwater inspector to come in uh, during the next 10 days. And so then the Clearwater inspector would come in during those next 10 days, approve or disapprove, uh, and, and we're good to go. Uh, obviously, there is potential concerns where, you know, maybe a certificate isn't issued then uh, because it doesn't pass or the person doesn't allow this, uh, <coughs> the clear water inspector in, but in those cases, the uh, permit would be uh, invalid uh, at that point. Um, th they don't expect that that's going to be uh, a major problem. So that's, that's the issue uh, before you uh, today. I, I understand from talking to uh, Attorney Simon, there were some discussion on some of these other issues, uh, but those were all things that were in the prior ordinance that was passed a year ago. And Thank it's you. only good for two years, correct? <laughs> I believe it is good for two years, but this ordinance doesn't affect that one way or the other. Is, is that, do you know, is the, is the two-year limit a state statute, or no. is, it, is that just an arbitrary number that we came up with? That's a number that was approved actually a number of years ago uh, when it, it used to be that it was only good at the time of the sale, uh, and so the council did probably five, six, seven years ago uh, approve allowing it to be good for a period of two years. Alderman Boring. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, does anybody have an idea of what the compliance is among the citizens with the Clearwater requirements? Do you have any ideas that, you know, 80% are in compliance, 40%? Does anybody have any idea? Thank you. Alderman Bellinger. Um, as part of the uh, Public Works Committee, I am aware <coughs> that um, the Clearwater treatment numbers have been going down. Um, the last few years, and so we're, re we're reporting, and we have to report those. We're required by uh, the DNR, I believe, to re report these figures. So the treatment of clear water has been going down, which is a good thing, and uh, it's the, the fear that um, uh, Sharon at the water treatment plan has is that should, should we not pass this or um, somehow, you know, loosen it up, the, the ordinance in some way, that the, uh, the clear water results will go the other direction where there will be um, greater um, volume of clear water that's having to be treated and thus reported and then we become out of compliance with the DNR. So that, that's, a, that's a fear from um, the water department or the sewage treatment plant. Thank you, Alderman Bellinger. Alderman Heidemann. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Is there a cost for this certification <coughs> for this inspection? My understanding, and again, this is not under this ordinance, but my understanding it is free uh, as long as you do it the, as long as you get the first inspection. If there has to be a second inspection, if you miss an appointment and, and you know, don't let the inspector in when you said you would, uh, there would be a fee for additional inspections thereafter. Any other discussion? Seeing none then, will the clerk please call the roll. <clears throat> So this would be to accept and adopt and pass the ordinance. Yes. Fifteen eyes. Motion passes. <clears throat> Item 6.10 through 6.14 will be referred to various committees. 
Under ordinances, 7.1 <coughs> is an ordinance by Alderman Donahue, Hammond, Boren, Heidemann, and Koth, amending sections of the municipal code as to amend the table of organization in the public works engineering division. Alderman Donahue. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I would uh, move to suspend the rules. Second. Is there an objection to suspension? Seeing none, please proceed. Thank you. Uh, I would move that the ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Uh, is there any discussion on the, on the uh, motion to approve the ordinance? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Nice. Motion passes. Matters laid over. 8.1 is an RO number 319 of 1516 by the City Planning Commission. Two is re referred general ordinance number 49 of 1516 by Alderman Donahue and Jose amending the zoning map to change the use district classification of property at 824 uh, South A Street from Class CC Central Commercial to Class CC with a Planned Unit Development Overlay Classification recommends that the ordinance be passed. Alderman Bellinger. Thank you, Mayor. Move to accept and file and pass the ordinance. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Fifteen eyes. Motion passes. <laughs> Items 8.2 through 8.5. Um, I need a motion to approve. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to put those resolutions upon their passage. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Um, these resolutions are directing public hearings for the future land use map of the comprehensive plan. Um, directing a public hearing to change the zoning map for property located at 1524-1526 Salmon Avenue, uh, a public hearing to change the zoning map for property at 1413 Erie Avenue and 1416 Ontario, and um, to change the future land use map of the comprehensive plan to change the use classification for the property at 1413 Erie Avenue and 1416 Ontario Avenue from neighborhood preservation to community mixed use. Is there any discussion on the motions? Seeing none, will the clerk uh, see that's a voice vote. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Are there other matters, city attorney? There are two other matters. Uh, the first is an RO. Uh, by the city clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending December 31, 2016 and June 30, 2017. That to be referred to the Law and Licensing Committee of the new council. And uh, the second is an RO by the city clerk submitting a claim from Scott P. Mulder for alleged damages uh, to his right-hand side mirror. That to be referred to the Finance Committee of the new council. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I would move to adjourn. I think my learned colleague said it sine die. Day. Day. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. <laughs> Will the clerk please call all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. We stand adjourned. Thank you very much and thank you for all your service this past year. Yeah. We'll miss you. <laughs>